people tell their creepiest and unexplainable glitch in the Matrix experience. Like and subscribe or I'll haunt you tonight. Let me preface this by saying there has always been creepy stuff happening around me, and I have several stories of my dad's old house, which myself and my siblings all agree is haunted. I also had my dead best friend visit me twice, which was nice. So this evening, my partner and I were upstairs sorting laundry when his daughter called us downstairs as dinner was ready. I was heading down the stairs, my partner right behind me, literally two steps behind me. He did his usual thing of tickling the back of my neck as we walked. The bottom of our stairs is wooden, so you can hear when somebody steps onto it from the carpeted stairs. When we got to the bottom, my feet hit the floor as usual. I turned to ask him something, and he wasn't there. He wasn't there. I totally froze for a second and looked up the stairs, and there he was. On the top step, pale and shaking. I asked him what the hell just happened, and he kept saying, I don't know, I don't know, I was behind you, and before I hit the bottom, the next step took me back upstairs. We are very freaked out. I didn't say anything to our girl as she is already leery of this stuff, although he and I are somewhat used to it. When I was a teenager, I worked as a lifeguard in a water park. We had five water slides that started from this one tower and ended at a single pool that was line of sight, but with the layout of the park, it was a few minutes walk from the slide pool to the top of the slides again. One lifeguard sat at the top of the tower and another would be at the pool at the bottom so we would signal to each other if someone was messing around on the way down or if we needed to pause the line for any reason. With the layout of the park, you could not just see the slide pool but see the entire park from the top of the slide tower. You could even see someone as they walked the entire few minute path from the slide pool up the slide tower again. The last two hours of the day were always really slow on the slides, so I would frequently skip my breaks to sit on top and twiddle my thumbs for the remainder of my shift. Anyways, it's about 30 minutes before closing, and I'm doing my thing chilling on the top of the slides. Only two kids, a boy and a girl, were going down the slides and coming back up since there was no line at this point. As I said, it was a long walk, so the boy would come up and go, then about two minutes later the girl would come up and go, two minutes later the boy again, etc. Well, the boy comes back up, and he goes down slide 2. Slide 2 is completely enclosed, very fast, under 20 seconds ride, and has about a 24 diameter. I'm bored, so I lean over the rails, watching the bottom, and never see the boy come out of the slide. A minute later, the girl comes up, and she says she wants to go down slide 2. I tell her to wait a minute and have her wait while I watch for the boy to come out, he never does. After a solid 2 minutes from me sending him down, keep in mind, it's a fully enclosed 20 second ride, I radio the guard at the bottom and ask if the boy came out the guard says he never did. Then I scan over the entire park, there's maybe 20 people in the park at this time of day, and I don't see the boy anywhere. At this point, I'm getting confused, but chalk it up to the boy coming down, jumping out the side of the pool, and going to the nearby bathroom. After finally concluding I must be crazy, I send the girl down slide 2. Sure enough, 20 seconds later the girl comes out of the slide and runs off, no issue. A few minutes later, the girl comes back up, goes down slide 2 again, and comes right back out 20 seconds later. So, I go back to waiting for the next person to come up the slide tower, when all of a sudden, the boy comes out of the bottom of slide 2. It had been at least 10 minutes since I had sent him down, and the girl had gone through that slide as normal twice in those 10 minutes. To this day, I can't figure out what happened. Like I said, slide 2 is fast, narrow, and fully enclosed. There's no way to stop yourself on the way down, Trust me, I've tried. And even if he did manage to stop himself, there is no way that girl could have passed by him at all, let alone unimpeded in the normal 20 seconds. This boy just disappeared off the face of the earth for 10 minutes and respawned in the middle of slide 2 like nothing happened. I've gone over it in my head many times, and to this day I have no clue what happened to that boy for 10 minutes. This happened one about 3 months ago. I worked night shift in a call center for an airline, so I usually sleep for most of the day, but we have a routine on a Sunday where I will get up slightly earlier and me, my wife, and my son will sit down and watch a movie together, taking turns each week as to who picks the movie. This particular Sunday I get up around 2pm and go through my usual waking up routine of having a cigarette and making a coffee, etc. It's my son's turn to pick the movie, 
So he decides we're watching Avengers, Civil War. Spend the next few hours watching that and then follow it up with a dinner of carbonara. Rest of the evening passes as usual. We read a chapter or two of the book I read out loud to my son, and wife, he goes off to bed, and I chill for a bit before I leave for work at 9.30pm. I go through my shift as normal, nothing strange or untoward happens, and I finish Monday at 8am. Jump in the car and get frustrated by the usual Monday morning traffic. It was definitely Monday, I even heard the traffic report and the guy saying Monday rush hour was just as busy as normal. I get home, at this point the house is empty as my son is away to school and my wife is away to work. I have a cup of tea and head to bed. This is where it gets weird. So I'm sleeping, and then I'm woken up by my wife, making a joke about how I must have forgotten to set my alarm because it was already 3pm and my son was champing at the bit to watch a movie since it's his week to pick. Wait, what? I tell her it's Monday and we watched a movie yesterday, in fact, she should still be at work and my son at the after school club. She looks at me weird and says I must have been dreaming because it's only Sunday today and she definitely hasn't been to work. I look on my phone, and sure enough, it's Sunday October 25th. I get up and start going through my routine, cigarettes, coffee, etc. I'm feeling a bit weird, not ill or anything but a bit out of place. I just didn't feel right. I try to explain to my wife that I'm certain I went through Sunday the day before, but she was having none of it, and still doesn't to this day, and told me I must have just had a very intense dream. I mean, I suppose it's possible, but I'm pretty certain it was not a dream and it was 100% real. Anyway, the main aspects of the day were identical, not every detail because I consciously went out of my way to change small things I remembered from the day before, but the big details were the same. We watched Avengers Civil War and had carbonara for dinner. I had to reread the chapters in the book because, as far as they were concerned, we never read them, and all of the calls I received during my shift at work were the exact same as I remembered. After pretty much being dismissed by my wife, I haven't really spoken about this to anyone except my best mate, who pointed me in the direction of this sub, but I can't stop going over it in my head. I'm absolutely certain it was real, I don't think anyone will ever be able to convince me otherwise, but I really want to know what happened and why it happened. I still get the uneasy feeling from that morning when I think about it. My mind is blown, and I need to tell someone. Let me start with, last February, a really really good friend of mine passed away, and it was devastating. I'm going to call him Matt. A few days later, scrolling Facebook, I saw the obituary for a classmate, we'll call her Alexis. I remember vividly seeing her obituary because I had been sitting at the bar with a few friends having a shot of Matt's favorite whiskey in his memory. I recall having the conversation with my fellow classmates about how sad it was to lose two people from our graduating class in the same week. I can remember the photo that was used for her obituary clearly. I could describe it as clear as day. Well, now it's been about a year, and I was having a conversation with my mother, who came to visit today. Somehow Alexis's mom was brought up in conversation since my mother had worked with Alexis's mother back when we were kids. I mentioned to my mother how sad it was that Alexis had passed, and my mother was shocked because she had never heard about the passing. After she went home, she was going to reach out to a mutual friend of Alexis's mother who had worked with them to let her know of the passing, but something struck my mother as odd that she had no knowledge of this. So she looked up Alexis's brother on Facebook to see if there had been anything posted since our families had been close so many years back before Alexis's family had moved out of state. My mother reported back that Alexis and her family were all alive and well. Alexis had even posted 20 hours prior about a vacation they had just returned from. I was shocked because I remember saying a parting word with my classmates about her passing at the bar. I remember seeing all of the Facebook posts from old classmates and friends mourning the loss. I have since scoured the internet looking for an obituary, I even went to her best friend's timeline to see if I could find the post that I clearly remember her putting up of them together and nothing. Everything is gone. There isn't a trace of evidence showing the passing of Alexis anywhere in the entire country when I remember so clearly since it had happened shortly after Matt's death and I had learned about it and discussed it with other classmates during our outing in remembrance of Matt. I haven't reached out to any other classmates from the bar to see if they recall any of this because I'm not entirely sure it's appropriate, but I'm sitting on my couch having to ask myself if I imagine all of this, the posts, the obituaries, and the full-length conversations I had with others around the time she had supposedly passed or if I've experienced a glitch in the matrix. Of course I am happy to hear that my childhood friend and classmate is alive and well today, but I'm just learning that my brain has exploded learning that she did not pass. 
My sister and I saw several weird things at the beach. This happened about 15 years ago. We were on our annual family holiday, and my sister and I decided to go for a walk on the Norfolk UK, beach we were near. Our dog Bella, a biscuit frise, loved going for walks, but today she completely refused and would not budge. We just thought it was funny how stubborn she was being and just went without her. About 30 minutes into our walk, I told my sister to watch out as there was horse poo in our way. Up ahead, we could see a woman with blonde hair on a brown horse, and we both commented on it. As she got closer, she was not on a horse, nor were there any horses around. That was quite weird to us, and we were both sure she was on a horse. Something felt very odd, but we carried on walking. Another 20 minutes in, we were suddenly surrounded by hundreds of dead crabs. It seemed odd, but we also discussed that, being a beach, it wasn't that out of the ordinary to see dead crabs, just not usually that many. We stopped for a bit just to enjoy the sound of the sea coming in and out. I got this sudden rush of fear over me, looked to the horizon, and saw what looked like a torpedo going across the sea line at a steady pace. I started to tap my sister to get her attention to show her what I could see. She could see it too and started to freak out. We genuinely thought the beach was about to be bombed. As the torpedo got to one end of the horizon, it turned around and started to come back. This time, as it started to come back past, it looked like it was opening up and inflating. I checked with my sister, and she too could see everything I saw. The torpedo opened up into what looked like a boat, or what a smaller Noah's Ark would look like. The boat was clearly bright green and yellow, but I felt like we should not have been able to see the colors so clearly with the boat being so far away. The weirdest part was that we could see a man on the boat, much bigger than the boat, waving slowly and smiling as he went past. We kept looking at all the people around us, and no one else was looking. Once the boat got to the end of the horizon, it turned back into a torpedo, went to the other end, then disappeared. When we got back, my mom was really worried as we had been gone for ages, and she said both our phones went straight to voicemail even though they were both turned on with full battery. We were in disbelief about what we had seen, and I've tried to research it and cannot find anything that remotely touches on the subject. This happened two years ago. I was 20, living with parents, and had just finished my second year of university. It was a late morning in June, and my mom asked me to go to the shop and buy her some milk. It's about a 10-minute walk from my front door to the shop. I left the house sometime between 11 and noon. When I get there, I'm surprised to see how busy it is for so early on a Friday. It's filled with secondary school kids, which usually only happens before or after school starts. I figure it must be a half day, but I don't ponder it too much. I buy the milk and make my way home. As I'm walking home, I see a car coming up the road towards me that looks like my mom's. It pulls up right beside me, and I realize that it is my mom. She yells at me to get it now, and I quickly get in the passenger seat. My mind is racing thinking that something has happened to dad or someone in our family. Then she asks, where have you been? Cut a long story short, according to her, I went out at the time mentioned above and was gone for nearly four hours. I checked my watch, and, sure enough, it was 4.06 p.m. I try to explain that it was impossible and I just left the house. If I wasn't such a sensible honest person, she might have thought I was lying, but instead she was worried. She thought I'd blacked out and convinced me to go and see a doctor a couple of days later, which I did. I was referred to the hospital for an MRI. As far as anyone could tell, nothing was wrong with me. This was on my mind for a good few weeks after it occurred, and I realized that whatever happened must have happened on the way to the store, which explained the school kids. Oddly, I didn't notice the change in temperature or daylight. However, given that it was a warm but typically overcast English summer, there probably wasn't that much of a change between noon and 4 p.m. The only thing that comes to mind is that I had taken a detour on my way to the shop, just on a whim. Rather than follow the stretch of winding road up to the shop, I cut through a street and walked up a side alley between two houses. I don't normally do this, so could this glitch in the matrix have been connected to that alleyway? I haven't taken that detour since, but I'm tempted to. So a couple of years ago, I was out having a beer with a couple of my friends on my terrace. It was a cloudy drizzly day, and we were all talking about our childhood days. It was a good day. I got up to go to the table with the icebox to get another beer when suddenly everything blacked out. The next thing I saw, I was suddenly at a train station that looked from the 1800s. I don't even know if trains existed then, but based on the architecture of the station and people's clothing, 
It felt around the time period. I was standing under a giant clock trying to make sense of what this place was and what had just happened suddenly when I realized I had a ticket in my hand that said first class reservation from Brussels to Mechelen. At this point, I would like to clarify that I'm from India, and back then I still hadn't traveled to Europe, so at that moment, I was still very confused as to where I was and why I had that ticket in my hand. I felt a sense of urgency as the train was ready to leave and the clock under which I was had struck 2.15 pm and the departure time had already passed. But the train was still at the platform blowing its old steam horn. The engine looked brand new, but it was a steam engine like the olden days. I was completely baffled by what was happening, and at this point I saw a man staring directly at me. He was wearing a penguin suit, wore a tall hat, and had a huge mustache. His look was more of one wherein I felt he knew something. Something like I wasn't supposed to be there. Just that moment, everything snapped back, and I remember lying down on my terrace with both my friends standing over me, terrified. I was back at my terrace. I asked them what had happened, and they told me what they saw. They said while I was walking towards the table with the ice box, I froze stiff and fell on the ground as if a statue. I was out for hardly two to three seconds. They saw me falling and came running, calling out my name, and I just came back to my senses. The feeling was very weird because they said I was out for hardly two to three seconds, but what I remembered from my experience at the station was that I was there for at least 10 to 15 minutes, closely watching everything and everyone around me. To this day, I believe I somehow slipped into another reality, and that man who looked at me, the face of whom I still remember very clearly, I'll never forget, somehow realized my slippage into another time period and somehow sent me back. I'm currently driving home from my lunch break, so I'm using Siri to talk, hopefully this makes sense. So back in the summer we had a huge friend trip to Lake Powell. For anyone that has been there, you know it's absolutely beautiful. Anyway, we were boating through the canyons and going deeper and deeper into the canyons, Lake Powell. At one point, I thought in my mind something along the lines of, damn, this place is so beautiful it almost looks fake or like it was designed to look this way by something. When I started saying that in my mind, a friend turned around to me and said, dude, it feels like we're in a movie and we're looking at movie props, it looks so fake. And I turned around and looked and said, dude, what the hell did you just say? I was thinking the exact same thing. We were both freaking out about it, but then it got a little freakier. We were sitting at the back of the boat looking at our 10 or so friends standing up while the boat was slowly going through the canyons, and as I watched them looking at the scenery, I experienced an altered state of conscience. The best way to describe it is that the facade of the human experience was dropped, and all of a sudden, my friends looked like gods or angelic beings experiencing earth and just enjoying the moment. My friend turned to me and said, dude, look at our friends, they're so beautiful and alive, they look like angels. And I knew at that moment we were both experiencing the same thing. The best way to describe what we saw is that it looked like we placed ourselves in a video game and were enjoying what we created. It's super hard to describe this experience. If you've seen Maze Runner, you know how they make you forget everything before you go into the maze, but yet you had an existence before? It felt like that. That nature of reality teased us and slightly withdrew, and we saw our friends and this earth for what it could truly be for a brief moment in time. I live in a very small town. We have a small grocery store and hardware store, you know the drill. I was done getting groceries and hopped in my car to head home. As I pulled up to the end of the driveway of the store, blinker on to get onto the main road, I see a big white lifted Chevy pickup driving toward me that I need to wait for. I watch it as he drives closer to me, remarking to myself that it looks so similar to my husband's, just older and rusted around the edges. It even has the same black emblem and large iron cross bumper. As the truck goes past me, my jaw nearly falls open. Staring at me intently was a man almost identical to my husband, but with a longer, graying beard and gray hair around the ears. I quickly gathered myself together and pulled out behind the truck and up to the stop sign that followed. He was staring at me, still in his side mirror. Glancing away and then staring at me again. He took off like a shot the first chance he got, and I tried to follow to see which direction he took, but a car was coming and I couldn't get out behind him in time. The truck sped off toward my road, but I don't know if he turned in that direction or not. I know that's a little crazy but I couldn't help feeling the total connection I feel with my husband when I saw his reflection in that side mirror staring at me. It gives me goosebumps to think about it because it was like he knew that I was me, and I was the wrong age, and that he needed to get out of there before I could follow. I got home, 
and my husband was there, working in his wood shop. I told him about it, and he chuckled and asked if he looked hot when he was old. I mean, he did if it was really him. If I told you what I saw last night, you would not believe me. Like I can't even wrap my head around it. Scariest thing I've ever experienced. I can't even talk about it without sounding crazy, so here it goes. I went to do laundry around 2 a.m. with my oldest son. After we put the laundry in, we went to a McDonald's drive through to get something to drink. The drive through was packed with about five or six cars ahead of us. I noticed none of the cars were moving forward, and it had been like five minutes already waiting. So I decided to go around the car in front of me to the next drive through lane, McDonald's has two lanes. As I'm pulling around them, I look to their car to see why they are not moving, and I kid you not, both people, driver and passenger, look dead. Heads tilted all the way back, eyes shut, not moving dead. I freaked out and tried to pull out of the drive through entirely, going around the other cars just to get out of there, and I kid you not, the next car I passed all the passengers also looked dead. Heads tilted back, eyes shut. I panicked, thinking maybe they were all shot or someone killed them all, so I hit the gas and got the hell out of there. I couldn't fathom what happened or barely speak, I was hyperventilating, so my son called 911 and told them what happened, and they sent an officer to check. A few minutes later, the cop called us back and said everything was fine at McDonald's. Mind you, my son saw it too. We both saw the car in front of us, the people looked dead. This thing was terrifying, it literally looked like one of those rapture movies or end of the world type of stuff. Needless to say, I can't wrap my head around what we saw or why. I'm still scared over it. I know I'm not crazy because my son saw it too. But it feels crazy to even say it. Anyways, yeah, scariest thing ever.